I'm Nicole, and welcome to episode four of the Nicole Stitches podcast. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for stopping by. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. I am Nicole, a left-handed crocheter, knitter, sewist, cross-stitcher, and general crafter based in Northern Virginia, where I live and work with my boyfriend and our cat Webster. You can find me on Instagram at Nicole SP Designs, on Ravelry as she writes things, on Pinterest as NSP Designs, and on Etsy where I make and sell handmade project bags, fiber accessories, and original crochet pattern designs. Um, I will also link all of that information in the description below as well as the Instagram account for my cat Webster. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for my intro spiel. Uh, let's get started. Today is a very gloomy, rainy day once again. It was a gloomy, rainy day last week when I filmed, and it is the same situation today. I was actually a little bit concerned I wouldn't be able to film today because right as I got off of work at my regular 9 to 5 and was getting ready to come and film, a thunderstorm happened. But I think fortunately the time it took me to get ready to be in front of the camera, um, the thunderstorm kind of petered out a little bit. So hopefully it's done for now, but I don't know, maybe there'll be more thunder and I have to make a bunch of edits. We'll find out. This week, uh, once again, pretty uneventful other than the terrible weather. It, it did get uh, a lot nicer uh, over the weekend and yesterday was a pretty nice day, but it seems to be getting icky once again and it's kind of breaking my heart. Uh, I'm definitely a warm weather person. I wait all year for spring and summer to arrive. I really, I don't do well in winter. Um, I am one of those people who, who struggles in the winter with the blues and no sun and the cold and the, ugh, it just, it's terrible for me. So I so look forward to the warm weather every year and it feels like this year it is just taking forever to become nice and then stay nice. <sighs> and I thought we finally got there, but here we are, rain and gloom. Uh, so without further ado, I will just move on to works in progress. Um, I am drinking a coffee today out of my Buzz Lightyear mug. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I uh, collect mugs. I'm a big mug collector. Um, I have quite the extensive uh, arsenal of mugs when we moved in together. My boyfriend, my boyfriend knew that I collected mugs and uh, I also collect them as souvenirs when we travel. Um, the two things that I try to always pick up when I travel are mugs and yarn. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's literally just self-enablement. It's all that is. It's just no self-control. But, um, so he traveled with me by the time we were moving in together and he knew that I collected mugs, but I don't think he understood, um, the volume of mugs <laughs> that he would soon be living amongst. Um, uh, <laughs> it's a lot. He has maybe four mugs that he brought here and I filled four cabinets <laughs> with my mugs, uh, but you know, we always have something to drink out of now. Anyway, this is today's mug. It is Buzz Lightyear, uh, one of my favorite Disney characters. I am drinking Starbucks creme brulee coffee and uh, Irish cream creamer. I don't know the brand. It's in a green bottle. It might be International Delight or I might be lying. We'll never know. Okay, works in progress. We know that I've been working on my Tecumseh sweater. It is out of the bag right now because I was stitching on it a little bit. Um, now it's all tangled up in my drawstrings. Okay, let me show you the front of the bag. This is my project bag. Uh, it's my bigger size. I just started making some of these for the shop. I was not selling them before, but a couple people have asked, and so I thought I would add them. I'll show them a little bit later, but this is... This is my bag. It's a prototype. I made it quite a while ago. Uh, some great pins on here. And this one is my newest one. It's from Nerdbird Makery. And I'm going to hold it a little bit closer because it's pretty small. But it's just a little, uh, little bowl of uh, yarn ramen. <laughs> Which, I am a ramen enthusiast. So, made me pretty happy. Uh, so, here I am with my Tecumseh sweater. I think... Last week, I was, last week, I was uh, working my way through this section. I think every time that I've shown this, I've been working on the color work section, uh, because here we are again. I am 
almost done with this chart. Um, and this is the last time I have to do color work on the body of the sweater, which is very exciting. And I think I have maybe five rows left of this chart. And then the rest of this section, the body, I believe, is a few more inches of just stockinette in this navy color. And then I'll do the ribbing and move on to Sleeve Island. Uh, so I think, I don't think I had separated for the sleeves yet last week. I don't think so because yeah, you have to finish, you have to finish this chart before you separate. So I've separated for the sleeves. Um, <laughs> here they are, they're on waist yarn. Um, just some random yarn that I had from a scrap ball and I have tried it on a couple of times and it does fit. So I anticipate that it will fit even better after blocking. Uh, that my, I want to get the, the neck to lie, it kind of uh, <laughs> sucks up to my, real close to the, to the throat right now, and I think that's going to settle better once it's blocked. I'm going to try and fix that so it lays kind of more, more in this region than like right up here. But even if it comes close like that, it's not the worst thing. Here I am. Um, yeah, I'm still really enjoying it. It's, it's a very addictive uh, project. I keep uh, just telling myself, well, I'll, I'll do one more, one more of the, the, the feather color work repeats, or I'll just do one more row or whatever. And I just, I never stop at that. Um, on here, marking my beginning of round is a new stitch marker slash progress keeper from my friend, little itty, little bitty delights on Instagram. And I'll hold it closer so you can see. It is a tiny purple macaron with a pretty well-known gold picture frame on it. Uh, I am a friend's... Uh, oh no. It's gonna look like I planned this, but I'm wearing a friend's t-shirt also. <laughs> so what I was going to say is, I'm a big fan of the TV show Friends. I said this on my first episode, um, but the little picture frame on here is the little golden picture frame that's on Monica's door in her apartment. As soon as I saw this posted, on her account, I got so excited and I messaged her and she told me <laughs> that it would be in her next shop update. And so I set a reminder on my phone and I treated myself to a little Monica's Door Macaron Progress Keeper and I love it. It's so cute. Uh, I put it on my Tecumseh sweater the next chance I got, um, next time I got to the beginning of the round. I did, they come on a little lobster clasp. Um, like this, which is great because when they come on the clasp like this, you can use it for knitting or crochet. Um, cause crochet, you need to be able to like take it off the, the stitch that you're marking. Um, and so I just, uh, I, I started out with just looping my, uh, cord, my cable through the hole of the lobster clasp, but that was a little snug for me. So I just found a little, just a little metal ring. I have, I had a little bit of a uh, jewelry making kick a few years ago and I still have the beads and findings and such. So I just grabbed one of these from one of those boxes, stuck it on there and made myself a closed stitch marker. That's not gonna, that's gonna move on my cable a little bit easier. It's not gonna snag my work, but I really love it. I'm so excited to have it. I also got, oh, I don't know what I did with it. What did I do with it? I think it's in my notions pouch. I also grabbed from her shop update a second stitch marker, which is a little tiny tub of popcorn. And it even says popcorn right on the bucket. How cute is that? And they're little, they're so cute. These little tiny popcorn bits. And oh my goodness, this is adorable. I have to find, I have to fit this on just the right project as well. I'm kind of um, mind boggled by all of these people making stitch markers now who make like the food miniature stitch markers, like Little Bitty Delights and Sucra Sucra Miniatures um, and Simply Serving. I cannot fathom how they make those teeny tiny little little charms that look so realistic and they look so good. So anyway, that's just a rant about people who are more talented than me. That's my Tecumseh sweater. I'm hoping, I'm almost done with this color work chart, so I'm hoping to be finished with the body in the next couple days maybe by the end of the week, and then uh, get to the sleeves. And after that, it's done. So I should have my first For Me sweater off the needles very soon, and I'm very excited. And I may or may not already have my next sweater project lined up. It's fine.
I have this on the pile. My Asana Wrap by Amba O'Brien, but I don't think I've worked on it much since last week. I've maybe put a couple more rows in, but uh, last week it got some love because I was doing a lot of errand running where I was going to have to wait, but my Tecumseh project uh, was kind of too cumbersome for the things I was doing, so I brought this with me and worked on it, but since then I don't think I've brought it back out. Uh, maybe a little bit, but not much. So I'll just show you real quick that it looks the same. <laughs> uh, this coffee cup stitch marker slash progress keeper is once again by Little Bitty Delights, and um, I have no more progress to speak of really, but I thought I'd show it. It is technically a work in progress, and I'm not uh, I'm not ignoring it or putting it in hibernation or anything. I, I want to finish it. It's just Tecumseh stealing all my attention this week, and I have one new start as well in my pinup girl project bag which you saw in my first episode because it was holding my tegna which i have since frogged uh, to come back to you at a later time but uh my project bag of my pinup girls is now housing a cross stitch project i showed you last week a cross stitch that i am intermittently working on it is a darth vader project for my older brother who loves star wars but i have a gift giving a uh, holiday coming up for someone and I'm not going to say who because they watch this podcast. They're going to watch this video, I'm assuming. And uh, I don't I don't want them to know. So I'm not going to tell you what the pattern is. Um, but I can show you there's not enough of this yet that you could tell what it is. So here's my hoop. It's all gridded up. Um, when I start a cross stitch project, I will often do a grid. Um, this one is in disappearing washable fabric marker. Uh, so don't worry, I did not, <laughs> this blue is going to disappear, I'm going to wash it and it'll go away. Uh, I will either use this marker to grid, or if it's a darker fabric, I will use, I will just stitch the grid in with some strands of floss. Uh, but I found that gridding really helps me. I know not everybody does it, but I do it most of the time because I mess up <laughs> otherwise. And I get really annoyed by having to frog uh, cross stitches. So, here I am, all gridded. You can see all of the spectacular progress I've made so far just some green stitches, and you can also see my little uh, needle minder, which is made by Armada Designs. She is on Instagram. I will link her in the description, and she also has a website. She mostly designs cross-stitch patterns, which are really fun and cute, but she occasionally will make these little needle minders. She goes to Disney World and gets some of the blind pin trading pin packs, and she turns the pins into needle minders, and I got a couple. Uh, last time she did that I got, I was in time to grab a couple that go kind of fast, so I got The Evil Queen, uh, because Snow White is one of my favorite Disney movies, and I got King Candy, who is from Wreck-It Ralph, which is also one of my favorite movies, and actually here is, let me show you, here is her business card, Armada Designs, her name, I'm pretty sure her name is Christy, and she's really great, her designs are really fun too, I have a couple, but yeah. That is my cross stitch project, and I will tell you that the pattern is by one of my favorite cross stitch designers. Uh, the shop is called Plastic Little, Little Covers. Her name is Lauren. She is British, and her designs are super fun, uh, moderately offensive. So if you don't like uh, cursy, cursy language or innuendo, uh, etc., then I, I would not recommend her shop to you, but everybody else, I strongly recommend her to, uh, because she has this great way of combining the kind of traditional floral cross-stitch motifs with, like, really obscene language, um, and feminist propaganda, which I get a big kick out of. I think it's great. I've also, she also has, like, non-cursy designs. Uh, if you're curious, she has plenty that don't involve curse words or anything offensive, but she just, she does really gorgeous work, um, and I really enjoy her, so I'm going to link her in the description as well. I'll link her Instagram and her Etsy shop. Um, yeah, that's all my works in progress. My Tecumseh, my uh, Asana wrap, which is only a mile, it's only mildly in progress at this point, I think, and my cross-stitch project. I do, however, uh, I mentioned a little bit ago that I have my next sweater all planned, and today the yarn arrived. So I will share that with you now. Talked about this in my second episode uh, after I had started my Tecumseh that I was basically not so intimidated by color work anymore, uh, or at least simple color work. And I had already grabbed a pattern for another color work sweater. That would be the, is there any uh, secret information on here? <laughs> no, 
That would be the Spotlight Sweater by Tin Can Knits. And there's a picture right here. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Um, I think there's a bigger picture in here. It's also in grayscale, so like how helpful is it really? But I'm gonna show you anyway. Here we go. Here's a big picture that you can see. And there's no copyright information on there. So you can see here, it's just very simple. The bottom is plain, and then the top, it's got these really cool chevron arrow guys. And uh, the colored photos would show you that, oh, the sun is out. Webster just came in here and uh, moved the blinds, which is his favorite activity when I'm filming. Um, but he just went to look outside and it, the sun is really bright now. Yay. Um, anyway, the spotlight sweater. <laughs> Uh, if you look at the color photos, if you go on Ravelry or uh, search it on Instagram, I'm sure somebody's made it, uh, you'll find that each of these three rows of chevrons is like a bright pop of color. And then this, uh, the body is like a neutral color. And I really liked that. I thought that was really fun. So I grabbed the pattern and then nitpicks, because they don't like me to have money. Uh, <laughs> ran a really good sale on exactly the yarn I wanted to use. They were basically running a sale where if you purchased a certain number of skeins, you got a value pack discount. And then I also purchased enough that I got free shipping. And the yarn itself that I wanted to use, which is Swish Worsted, was already a very affordable amount. So I grabbed it and I want a little advice because I'm not so sure about it now that it's here. So the colors I chose were these three for the pops of color, the contrasting chevrons. Um, this is Swish Worsted. It is a 100% superwash merino wool. And I chose this uh, color Honey, which is the same yellow that I'm using for my Tecumseh, but I'm using the DK. This is Conch, which is like a coral, coral pink. And then this is, I think this is Electric Blue. Yes, Electric Blue. And I like these three. Um, I like them as the contrasting color, so I think I'm definitely going to keep all three of these. But then I picked, and this is a problem that I've had on Knit Picks before, uh, they do tell you that your screen might show the yarns a slightly different color than their pictures, but I've definitely had kind of a consistent, uh, issue with Knit Picks where I bought the yarn thinking that it was one color or a range of colors and it got to me and it looked totally different. So... There's always that risk. I've, I've never, uh, I've never not liked the colors I got instead, but I think uh, it's just, it's just one of those things. It's one of the perils of buying online. So this is the color that I chose for the body of the sweater. This color is Camel Heather, and it looked more gray on, on the website. It looked more like a grayish tan, and this to me is kind of more like, it's more brown than I expected and it's kind of more brown than I wanted and I don't love it with let me grab I'll grab a couple more of the skeins just to show you together I'm not so sure about this combination please let me know what you think because I'm I'm not sure that I love it uh, I thought about doing a little bit of a swatch of the color work pattern just picking one of these and doing a little, almost like a gauge swatch, essentially, with, you know, the body color and then a contrast color to see it knit up, because sometimes that affects things. But I'm thinking that I might send this back and exchange it for more gray. Uh, I have a, kind of a lot of gray clothing. I have quite a few gray shirts. And the reason I didn't go with a true gray at the time was because I wanted to get away from that. I didn't want so much gray, but I look good in gray. <laughs> so uh, I might get, um, let me show you. My Tecumseh sweater is using Swish DK, so it's the same 100% superwash merino wool, but it's just a DK weight. And for that I'm using this gray. Oh my god, I don't know if you can hear all that clacking, but Webster is just rolling around <laughs> having the time of his life playing in the blinds. Good gracious. Webster. Webster. I'm doing a thing. Okay. What? Webster. So, for my Tecumseh, I'm using this color. It is Dove Heather. And I'm thinking maybe I will exchange... 
camel heather for dove heather because I feel like that would be the combination. And I feel like I like that better. I kind of, I kind of like that better. <laughs> I might do that. I'm not sure. I have to think about it. I, I do like that color of brown. I just don't know if I like it for this. <sighs> I do like that color of brown. I just don't know if I like it with these colors. I don't know if I like it for that project. So, you know, the other option is that I keep the brown and just buy more yarn, but I'm trying this thing where I want to be like fiscally responsible. So maybe not. We'll see what happens. But that, uh, if I decide to keep the brown, will be a new start uh, once my Tecumseh is done. And that is it for progress projects, stuff that I do with my hands, that segment of the podcast. <laughs> works in progress are all done. I will now share. I, uh, for the first time in my podcast last week, I shared a little shop news update and there's more exciting stuff. So I'm going to do another one. Hopefully you don't mind. Nobody said anything last time, so I'm going to do it again. First, I mentioned that I am going to start adding a larger bag size to the shop. Uh, this is my regular, uh, kind of standard project bag size. Most of the bags in my shop come in this size. Right now, this is called the large project bag. Uh, and it holds a good amount of yarn. I have, I have three cakes of fingering weight yarn in here right now, plus my shawl. And you can see that it's still pretty roomy. I can squish, squish a good bit of it down. So you can easily fit five or six cakes of yarn, fingering weight yarn in here, in my opinion, plus your pattern and your needles and such. Uh, but after I was showing off my Tecumseh bag, some people were interested in bags of that size. I've been working on that all, all day Sunday, all day, uh, from when I got up to about 9 or 9.30 at night, uh, except for maybe an hour when we went grocery shopping. I worked on cutting fabric and prepping various bag components to put these together. Uh, I did not finish many yet, but I'm going to be working on them this week, finishing them and adding them to the shop. And that would be these bags in this size. This is the same size that my Tecumseh bag is. So here is the bag full. Here is a bag of the same size flat. You can see, well, maybe this one might be a little bit taller. This one uh, I made quite a while ago. So the measurements might be slightly different, but they're basically the same size. And so I made this one in my pinup girl fabric, the same fabric as my cross stitch project bag below. Uh, you can see all of the ladies on here. And I added a fun red polka dot contrast uh, lining because where is she? Here she is. This lady has a red polka dot swimsuit and bandana. So I wanted to match that. And then none of these that I'm going to show you have the drawstrings added to them yet, but I will be doing that before they are listed, obviously. And yeah, I have uh, I have eight or nine different fabrics, I think, that I'm going to be offering these in. So I've got a pinup girl bag. I've got my mermaids. I showed you this fabric last week. Uh, I don't have any of my uh, regular bag size in the shop right now, but I'm going to be restocking them. I just have been devoting all of my shop work time to making these. So. Uh, two of this print in this size will be in the shop sometime this week. Here is the contrast lining. I like this fabric as well. It's really fun and geometric. Um, so I'll have two of these, and then I believe I'll have three of the... Where did I put it? I just had it. Friend. There it is. So I'll have two in this size in the mermaid print, and then I should have three in this size in the mermaid print as well. And it'll be the same lining. And then I have this fabric, which actually is a fabric that I've had for the longest time. I've had this fabric for years, just sitting in my stash, and I never knew what to do with it. Uh, I never knew what it wanted to be. And then I opened my shop, and I realized that it looks awesome as a project bag, so that was perfect. So I will have, I think, two of these bags, uh, this print, this size as well. And this one has a nice, the outside is a little bit, you know, she likes attention, this bag. 
So to tone it down, the inside is just a pretty uh, gray, with gray and white polka dot. And I love this size. It holds so much, which is my obviously my favorite feature. Uh, again, there's no drawstrings in them yet, but they will have a twill tape drawstring and they have uh, a handle over here and they're just dandy. Keep an eye out in the shop. I will have other fabrics as well in that size. It's just that these are the three finished bags that I have to show you. The other shop news I have is I am restocking a couple of popular fabrics. I am putting in more cats and donuts. You've seen my cat and donut project bag and I am adding more to the shop. I've had a couple of questions about that. Along with that fabric came some puffers. This fabric uh, was very popular in my shop when I had it there as well. People have asked if it's coming back. So it's just tiny dogs and cups of coffee that will be back in the shop. Uh, this week maybe next week as well that's pretty much it for everything related to uh craft progress and the shop so if you're not interested in anything else thank you for watching but if you'd like to hear about my reading progress this past week stick around reading progress i did it i conquered it i finished reading a wrinkle in time and i finished it by buying the audiobook and listening to it while i did other things because i tell you that book did not grab me <laughs> it's if you love that book and you treasure it, it's a childhood favorite of yours, more power to you, but I could not, I couldn't do it. I could not make myself focus on reading that book. I really tried and the best way for me to get through it was to get the audiobook. I did and I finished it finally and <laughs> that's off my plate. Uh, so that's a little bit disappointing. It was a book that I had always wanted to read and meant to read and I, you know, everyone speaks highly of it. But it just, it wasn't my cup of tea. It wasn't for me. I'm not reading anything new yet because I had just finished Wrinkle in Time today, but my next book is... My next book is lined up. It is I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter by Erica L. Sanchez. This is, I think this is a YA book, and I usually uh, don't read YA... I usually don't read YA anymore, but this book I've heard really, really great things about. I've had it recommended to me by a couple of people, and it sounds pretty good. So this is my newest, uh, my newest current read, and I'll give you an update on it next week. So I think that's it for me this week. Uh, let me know what you think of my works in progress, my project plans. Let me know what you think of my spotlight sweater color combination in the comments below, because I'm really having a life, a life struggle with it. Uh, let me know if you've read the book that I'm about to start reading, if it was good, or if I should... Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> oh lord. Subscribe if you enjoyed my videos. Give me a like if you feel so inclined. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you have better weather than we've been having lately. And I will see you next time. Bye! So I think that's it for me this week. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give me your opinions on the spotlight sweater color. Oh my god, Webster.